one of the common sayings that is trending online now on our social media mainly is that when uh, prayer becomes your habit, miracles become your lifestyle. When prayer becomes our habit, miracles become our lifestyle. And I actually believe in this saying because each and every one of us is a miracle. We are a product of prayers. And everything we have is a miracle. Whether it is our homes, whether it is our work, whether it is our business, our children, those are miracles because God gave them to us as when we prayed or somebody else prayed for us. That's why today God wants us to pray for the things that have visited us in our lives. What we see in the gospel reading today, this person is very comfortable, but at midnight a visitor arrives and this visitor now creates a crisis that he has to go to, a vis to a, a, another friend to solve. And me and you who are in this church, we could be having or experiencing a lot of visits. Some people have been visited by blessings. Some people have been visited by pain. Some people have been visited by what makes them cry. Some people have been visited by sickness, losses of a beloved one or property. Some people have just been visited by betrayal. Many people are crying in our world today because of what has visited them. Even when we look at what is happening in the political landscape of our country today, there are people who are really crying. Why? Something has visited them. You go to hospitals, people are crying. Why? Something has visited them. You go to families, things are no longer the same. Why? Something has visited them. But today God is telling us we need to arise in the dark and look for him so that he as a loving father may be a solution and turn what has visited us into our miracle. Turn what has visited us into our testimony. Turn what has visited us into his promise and turn what has visited us into a celebration. Sometimes I smile a lot with myself. And when I was making a reflection on this gospel, I was actually smiling a lot with myself because I remember when I was a child, those days photos were not digital. And every photo had a negative. And one thing that used to happen generally, the negatives would be developed in a dark room. The negatives would be developed in a dark room. And for those of that generation, you know very well how photo session was a, a, a very important ceremony. Families would prepare even for a whole month just to go and take photos. You try to take a, a what, you look at, for a, another posture. Sometimes you also borrow things from the neighbor. You borrow a lamp stand, washing stand, and many other things. But what struck me, which I want to share this morning, is the fact that negatives were developed in posi into positives in the dark room. And dark room was a very special room that could only be a a assessed by an expert. And when we think of this gentleman going to visit his friend in the night, and out of that visit in the night, something positive comes, God is telling us a very important message, not to be afraid to stand up when it is dark. With our negatives today, let us go and look for God. God who is in his own space will develop every negative of our lives into a miracle of our lives. And you know in Doluo, 
these photos, these negatives were actually not being processed. That was, is a very elite language. The negatives were being washed. The negatives were being washed. And when I think of it uh, in a spiritual perspective, some of these things that has visited us must be washed by the grace of God. And therefore, today let us take our negatives to be washed by God. Let us not carry them on our own. Finally, it is also important to understand from the gospel reading of today the language of God in tough times. When we are faced in tough times, God speaks mainly in two ways, in his spirit and in his promise. Anybody who has solved a problem in this world, God gave them the spirit to solve them. That is why the gospel is concluding how much more will God give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Sometimes let us not just ask for answers. Sometimes let us pray for the Spirit. Because that Spirit will take us to a place beyond the answers. And that's why every human being has their own spirit. Some people have a spirit of prayer. Their prayers have moved mountains. Some people have a spirit of working. Some people have just a spirit of discretion. Some people have just a spirit of doing things in a unique way. Today God is promising the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Another thing that God speaks is the promise. And today God is giving us a promise three times. He's saying, ask and it will be given. That is a promise. Search and you will find. That is a promise. Knock and the doors will be opened. That is a promise. What is God exactly telling us? We must do our part first. Then God will complete what we have started. God cannot start for us. He is a finisher. We are starters. A finisher and a starter must work together for completion to happen in their lives. That means there are things we must do first. And could be God is just waiting for us to pray, to ask, to seek, and to knock. And when we do this, it is important to do it prayerfully, persistently, and perseveringly. Prayerfully, living our life prayerfully, praying and making a prayer our habit and our lifestyle. Not just praying when we have problems, but praying always. Persistence is the ability to do it without giving up. Severally, we have to come to, to church severally. We have to do things severally. We, we should not count the number of times we work for God. And finally, perseveringly is without giving up. We must never give up. We lose a battle when we give up, not when we are knocked by challenges. And today, in a special way, let us pray that God may take away the spirit of Galatians in our lives. What is the spirit of Galatians that St. Paul is rebuking in the first reading? Hypocrisy. They had double lives. Life of grace and life of the world, and the world was now overtaking grace. If you have uh, listened to that reading that has been nicely read. Inconsistently and unpredictability. They were not predictable now. You never knew whether they are Christians or not. And that's why St. Paul is saying, who has bewitched you? Syncretism, trying to bring so many things and even doubt. And sometimes when we look at ourselves, I am sure St. Paul would look at each and every one of us and sometimes he'll ask, what has bewitched you? We have all these things in the Catholic Church. Why do we go to other faiths? We have everything in the church. And sometimes our allegiance to some of those things is more important than our allegiance to the church. If a witch doctor, for instance, would say, I need a blue cow, everybody would go and look for that blue cow. What is our attitude when the church says, okay, we are doing this process, we have family day, we have one, two, three. Sometimes we complain 
when we are supposed to leave our faith and we become very naive on the things that destroy our faith. So today, let us pray that God may take away the spirit of Galatians in all of us. Wakwanya sai kawono mondo miwateko male mogi kinda. Kino kawono nya sai singonua. Ninga mo kwayo obro mio. Nga mo manyu bro yudo. Nga mo duongo to bro yaone. Waduto ntire seje moko mwa kwa medot gigik mawaduaro. Nya sai ngiswani nya kawalem gikinda. Kudye mo tegno. Nekeche no won. Obro chung malo. Mondo timnu wagi mawaduaro. To mondo nyasai mondo chung, wan bini nyaka wachung. Mane mwumio kawono nyasai luongowa, wachung malo walem, gikinda kodie motegno. To nyasai bro chung malo gihono, kode hawi maduong, kinuburo umogo, kindawa. Wakwa nyasai, oji ungima male mkumwa, kode kindawa kakajo kristu.